He did. Sat down in the courtroom, and with a minute, within a minute, Foley had collapsed and died. As they were investigating his death, one of the officers listened to his iPod and heard, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. <laughs> so too must God's people, the church, be constantly commanded in and out, gathered and scattered, inhaled and exhaled by the very breath of God through the inspiration and expiration of the Holy Spirit. The disciples who have been disciplined out of their pride and despair by being crucified to the world through the cross of Christ delivered from all that fought and altar are now sent out apostles to witness to Jesus something they can help but do since it is Christ himself who is their life. They don't live any longer Christ is their life, is your life. Some years ago, there was a movie made about a meteorological event. The movie was called A Perfect Storm, after the confluence of three weather systems produced ideal conditions for the most intense storm in memory. During the run-up to the movie's opening, a reporter went to the communities who had lost fishermen, sailors, and rescue personnel to the storm. As she was interviewing a member of one of those search and rescue teams that had gone out to save sailors in the midst of the storm, she asked the question, How can you go out knowing it could be the death of you? And that search and rescue fell out just looked at her and said, wait, the book says you got to go out. It doesn't say you got to come back. You, apostles, witnesses to Christ, got to go out, bearing the aroma of Christ into the perfect storm Produced by the confluence of three forces, sin, death, and the power of the devil. You're not going to come back. Christ doesn't fare any better this time around than he did in first century Palestine. It will be the death of him again, and the wounds of Christ will be completed as they are applied for you. Your sinful self will assert, it is no longer Christ who lives in me, but I who live, and I am full of myself. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Time for some discipline again. You, the prideful or despairing disciples, are gathered by the sharp inhalation of God's Holy Spirit and confronted by the Word's own perfect storm of hope and font and all. So it is, through all the days of your baptism, you, God's people, the church, go in and out. You are gathered and scattered, inhaled and exhaled, each time to a death, each time to a life, death to death, life to life. As in gathered disciples, you are put to death and Christ is your life. As scattered out apostles, Christ your life is put to death and you live to yourselves. This daily dying and rising marks the time of your baptism. Tell Till that day when your baptism is finished. That day the writer of Ecclesiastes names as the day when the dust returns to the earth as it was and the breath returns to God who gave it. On that day, 
You will be breathed in by the breath of God one last time. Your final inspiration by the Holy Spirit. There. There you will be held until the dawning of another day. There you will be held until the dawning of that day all creation groans away. That new day when Christ shall come in all his glory. Then, then having been held in the bated breath of God just for that moment, then you will be exhaled one last time sent forth one last time, and then, there in the new creation where there is no more death, no more sin, no more power of the devil, you need never move again, for you will dwell 